Hi everyone, I'm here with a remote demonstration on how to make a whistle from clay. This is a great project for kids, but it's also fun for adults too. I had a great time uh, making this whistle. It was a project that I actually did in high school in, in my ceramics class and I revisited it this weekend and kind of did some troubleshooting to figure out what works best. And uh, this is what I came up with. So I'll start the video and I'll narrate and kind of chime in when needed. So we're gonna start with this basic idea of the pinch pot, which is really, it's the most uh, rudimentary form of the vessel or one of them that you could make. Um, and how I begin is just with a lump of clay, pressing my thumb into the small lump of clay, you know, something that kind of fits in the side of your, inside the palm of your hand. And then you can see in the video, it's all about um, pinching and rotating. And I'm, I'm pinching upwards, really. And what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm attempting to make sure that the whole piece is relatively even, you know, somewhere around a, uh, an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch would be fine. Uh, but you just don't want this thing to be super chunky. So I'm going around, going around, going around, trying to make that rim nice and compressed. You don't want to see the edges cracking of your piece. So you can kind of push down on the edge anytime you notice that. Uh, and then I'm going to start another little pinch pot. So uh, these are really, really tiny little pinch pots. So again, I'm pinching. Uh, I suck my thumb in there. I'm pinching. I'm going around and around and around. And you want to make sure it's as even as you can get it from the bottom all the way to the top. It's okay if it's a little lumpy. We're not looking to get it perfect right now, but what we're trying to do is get it even uh, and get it stable. And as things dry up, we can worry about the smoothness or, or the overall design. Right now, um, I like to think of it when I'm pinch potting or coil building is we work in a, a lower resolution in the beginning and then we work our way up to a finer detail as it dries. So I'm going to score. You could scratch with a fork. Um, you could scratch with a needle tool if you have one. You might have an actual scoring tool at home. Again, I'm working remotely, so I'm using the stuff that I have in my apartment, which is basically just a fork and a knife. Um, I have a shish kebab skewer that I'm using too to sometimes score. So I'll score both sides. I dipped my fork in water. I have a little water container. And I'm going to put them one on top of the other. And I'm really trying to compress one down into the other. I'm gonna go one direction, smooth that out, and then I'll go back and I'll go the other direction over that seam. And you don't wanna see any evidence of that seam. Really completely smooth it out. You can give it a little pat. But what we're going for is a smooth, hollow sphere. and. Um, you know, if you can figure out another way to make that, that works too. We just need a smooth, hollow sphere. So the next thing is going to be to make a mouthpiece. So I'm going to roll out a thick, chunky coil. You know, it can be about an inch thick or a half an inch. It, do, it doesn't have to be thin because we want to get a little skewer through there. Uh, we're really just making a tube that's going to fit right on top of that sphere that's going to work as our mouthpiece. I don't need all of this clay, so I'll cut that down. And carefully run this thing through a skewer, almost like a bead. And that's gonna give us um, an opportunity to blow wind or air through this, sorry, not wind, air through this piece. And I'm gonna roll it back and forth. That's gonna even out this thing on the skewer. 
it's going to help keep that hole centered. And it's also just going to straighten out our mouthpiece a little bit. So I'll roll it on there and then I'll, I'll probably cut down even a little bit more. I normally like to start with a longer piece than I need so I can cut down to the right size. So I'll cut down now, I'll put my knife down and then I'll roll that skewer a little bit and I can tear that extra piece off. Do the same on the other side. And then now you see we have a nice tube. It's actually almost a perfect hole on, on one side. Um, the other side was not as clean. If you get that skewer perfectly centered, it might be a little bit nicer, but this will do just fine. We just need a tube really to, to move air over our um, a beveled edge that's gonna make the noise really. So now I'm going to cut a hole in this. And I tried to make this a couple different times um, and I've tried a, a couple different techniques out. What I found is it helps to make that hole big enough to get your finger in and pinch. So I'm going to actually go back and make that bigger. I watched a, a couple other whistle demos online and a lot of them, you carve a little angle, but what I do is I pinch and you can see here, you should be able to see my mouse. Um, I pinched this little bevel right here, pinch it as pointy as you can. And when we move air quickly over that, it's going to make a sound basically. And it's just kind of like how you would take a bottle and kind of blow over the top. It's the same concept really moving air over an edge uh, with some sort of vessel beneath we can make tones so get that as nice and neat as you can and what i'm doing is i'm pressing down on the opposite side of my little beveled edge my little sharp point so my mouthpiece can stick down right in there so play with that placement if it's a little too far up or down or too close or too far back, it might not make the right noise. So what I do is I put it up there, I test it and see if I can get some sound. Um, and as long as I'm getting a sound, then I know I'm close enough to where I can really score. I can put that mouthpiece in place and then I can readjust as it dries up. Um, I might need to clean up the mouthpiece or I might need to go back into my little beveled sharp edge and kind of fix that up. So I'll score that down and you can hear like I'm close to getting that sound but I'm not there. Oh there it is. So it's very basic, um, but it does take some finesse. And as it dries, your sound might kind of become a little bit more clear. I like to get it working when it's wet clay, like right as I'm making it, I like to be able to hear a noise. And then as it dries up, I can, I can sharpen up that edge or, or adjust the mouthpiece. Some people will only make that beveled edge when it's leather hard by carving, but I find it a little bit more assuring to get that sound going earlier on in the process. And what I'm doing now, I'm, my apologies because this came out of view, but you can see I added a little tiny support coil around where that mouthpiece meets the vessel or the body of the whistle. Little bitty coil. 
if you can get a little tool in there and score, you can do that. But really connection points like this are going to rely more on you smoothing it out and really compressing it into the piece as opposed to scoring. So I'll just smooth that out. I've got a little skewer and I'm kind of getting it into the edge there. And again, just keep making sure that it makes that noise. Um, you can't see, but when I was doing this, I, had, I ended up with clay all over my mouth. Um, so don't worry, it's okay to get the clay on, on your lips. If you wanted to protect yourself, if you didn't feel comfortable with that, you could put just a little piece of plastic uh, on top of that mouthpiece with a hole in it so your mouth's not just touching the clay constantly. I'm a ceramic artist full time, so I've got clay everywhere, sometimes on my lips, on my mouth, on my face, so I didn't really mind. Okay, so the next step would be to decorate your piece. So this is a couple hours later. I set my whistle out in the sun. Um, you know, if you wanted, you could leave the whistle how it is. Maybe you just want a nice, perfect sphere. Maybe you go back and you really smooth that out or you make it super nice. Or maybe you want to decorate it with something simple like a face. So I'll show you how to do that now. Um, again, I've got my little bit of water. And I'll just come in there with a little skewer and I'll just score a little bit. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just roughing out the location for two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Which I'll just put on with little tiny balls of clay and a coil. Again, this is just a quick idea uh, on what you could do. I'm not the best at, at sculpting little cartoon faces on whistles, but it could be anything. You could put cat ears up top, you could put antlers, you could put elephant nose. And I think that's really what I like about the project is that the whistle is just a concept for you to make really any type of object. So once you figure out the mechanics and you get this thing that works and makes a noise, you can make it look like anything you want, which I think is great. I'll just stick on those eyes. What I like to do is, is wiggle things on just a little bit. Score the backside of your little ball of clay of your eye. You know, you could roll something up, scratch, scratch, scratch. Put it on really good, wiggle it in place where you scored the eyes. And go back and smooth out the seams really well. This thing is looking really silly right now. It's rough, but we'll get a little bit closer. Silly's good. I'm okay with that. What I did find out by making these is that the smaller the whistle, the higher the pitch. Uh, and then so the bigger the whistle, the lower pitch that you get. And this is really kind of um, the basis for a lot of woodwind instruments. I mean, although you have a reed in place that vibrates with a lot of them, uh, it's all about having a sharp point, some sort of vessel behind it, that could be a flute or a clarinet, uh, and then moving air over that sharp point. The reed vibrates, so that adds a whole nother element, but a flute doesn't have a reed at all or a recorder. And it's a very similar concept. So we could take this idea of the, the whistle and we could apply it to other types of instruments, which in my next video, I'll actually go over how to make a multi-note ocarina. So I've just come in, I've drawn some little uh, pupils or, or eyeballs within those eyes. And then I'll kind of go in and I'll add in some little nostrils to this nose part.
So there you've got a little face on there. And I think it needs something else, maybe some silly hair on the side. So I'll put some coils for hair next. So now I'm doing a mouth. So just kind of drew a simple line. And I'm gonna scratch, 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 score right where that mouth's gonna go. And then I'll roll out another coil. So rolling coils, it's all about doing light, even pressure. If you press too hard, it's gonna flatten out and not really roll. So score that coil, that'll help it stick on. And my apologies, we moved off the screen there temporarily. Just to get that piece on. And let's see, I'll fast forward just a little bit. So I got the mouth on and now I'm gonna put some hair on. So I, I scratched, I scored on the side. And I'm just quickly putting on some coils kind of to allude to the idea that this is kind of some sort of silly hair. I'll do the same thing to the other side. Okay, let's see if I can fast forward a little bit. You can go in once it sets up a little bit to clean up any details. If you find that the clay is too wet, and it's just behaving oddly, you can just wait till it dries up a little bit. So now you can see I've got this little guy put together. <laughs> some silly eyes, silly nose. Um, you know, so you could do something that is a either like a face or an animal or really anything. Or you could go a complete uh, non-representational route. Like it doesn't have to mimic or, or resemble something from life. So. I just, next I kind of erased what I did and I just rolled out a bunch of coils and I made this weird kind of spaghetti glob. Um, it's more of just a straight sculptural form, which I think is kind of funny to see this really strange object, not really know what it is, but then, oh, it's a whistle. It can make a little noise. I think there's something kind of interesting about that. So again, this isn't connected to the face. This is just a whole nother idea. You know, this is just a weird a spaghetti blob whistle, but it still works. Um, yeah, and I actually really like that. I hope to fire some of these someday soon. And there you have it. There's how to make a simple whistle uh, that also has some sculptural elements. So uh, thank you very much for joining.